Hey you guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to the shed. I know I always say this, but I am legit super excited about today's project. One of the things that I collect, one of the many things I collect, are bottles. And so I love apothecary bottles. And generally what I'll do is like make labels to put on them, which I think is really cool. My butterfly is visiting just for the holiday season. Um, I think monarchs are gorgeous to have sprinkles about around Halloween, but I have another bottle and I want to do a label, but I want to do a three dimensional label. So we're going to use a couple of things today. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell, owner and operator of Recycle Treasures. Let's get started on today's project. So I have this bottle, which is super cool, but it's kind of boring and I want to dress it up for the holidays. So this is what we're going to do, you guys. Um, IOD is coming out with a brand new mold. I am super crazy excited about it. I've already played with it a little bit. I made myself a little mini deer mount. I think he is so cute. I got to find a place for him. But guys, so this is the mold. It, it's called um, Frames. It's called frames and you get all of these different frames. There's one, two, three, four, five frames um, within this mold for you to be able to create different frames um, for different projects. I'm super excited to do some projects with these pieces, but for today, we are gonna make ourselves a 3D mold. So I want to use this round one, right? To make the back for our mold. And then we're gonna be using the Harper mold which is one of my favorites for lettering, um, is the Harper Mold. And so we're gonna be using the Harper Mold today and the Frames Mold today for our project. Um, you guys know that I love using resin in my molds, so I'll be using amazing casting resin today. Um, just clarification, I'm using the amazing casting resin. This is the 10 minute um, version and it's in the purple box and it is um, casting resin okay they have different kinds and you're gonna get different results so if you'd like to replicate what I'm doing today it's really important that you get the amazing casting resin um, 10 minutes in the purple box I'll be sure and leave a link below so you guys can find it I'll also be using my silicone cup to pour my resin love 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 these um, and we'll be painting it with some Wise Owls one hour enamel. I like the one hour enamel because it gives me this like nice, smooth, shiny finish. And of course you guys know I have to gild it with some copper because I love it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. But let's get started with our, um, resin. Now the amazing casting resin, just like most resins comes in a two part formula. So we have part A and we have part B. Um, and I have my silicone cup here that I've already marked so that I know exactly where my measurements are. The cool thing, you guys, about the new molds is they come with, um, it tells you exactly how much resin you're gonna use for the mold. So I know that I'm gonna use 29 mils for this mold right here. So I'm gonna use 30 mils for that, which leaves me about 10 mils left over. So if I pour 40 mils, then I know I'm gonna be okay because I'll have 29 mils in here and that'll leave me 11 mils to be able to pour my three and my one and anything I have extra, I'm just gonna pour extra molds. I always pop them out and I can just keep them um, in a little container and then I can use them whenever I want to. So let's go ahead and get started with our resin. I'm gonna start with part A and I'm gonna pour it up I know I'm doing 40 mils, so I'm gonna pour it up to the 20 mil line, and then I'll pour part B up to the 40 mil line. That way I know I have 50-50 of both parts of my resin. And I like to hold my cup at eye level when I'm pouring it so that I get the most accurate measurement possible. And part B. I'm gonna keep using this until you guys are stop being scared about using resin. Um, and then part B, I'm gonna pour that up to the 40 mil line. And I know I have 50-50 of each. And the set of, that I bought from Amazon has these little stirrers in there that comes with the cups, which is nice because I don't have to throw them up, throw them away. 
So you guys see how it's getting cloudy? I'm gonna keep stirring it until it actually gets clear. Um, that's when I know that everything is mixed together really well. And I only wanna stir for a few minutes because remember, this is gonna like fully set up in 10 minutes. So we don't have a ton of time. Now, your resin is gonna cure the fastest wherever you have the largest volume of resin because the heat makes it cure faster. So I'm gonna pour my larger mold first um, because I'm basically gonna get rid of like, well, 29 mils, right, of resin in this mold so that I don't have to worry about the resin in my cup setting up as quickly um, as I would if I would have poured my letter first. So I always pour my largest mold first. Look, my table isn't exactly level, you guys. Y'all pray for me. Ah! I thought I was gonna make it better by moving it over there. Make sure your table is level before you start pouring your resin. I guess it was more level here than over there. So we'll leave it there. And then with what I have left, it's just a little, and I know it's gonna generate very little heat, so I'm gonna have time to pour my smaller um, molds, which, you know, you have to move a little slower in order to get those filled up. And the silicone makes the Harper mold easier because I can squeeze um, the, t the front to make it go um, faster or slower. And so I know I have certain numbers that are my favorite, so I'm pouring those because I don't know I'll use those for something. And a lot of people get nervous about overpouring, you guys, but it's not a big deal. You can always snip any overpours off um, when your resin is still kind of soft. I guess I use it all, that's it. So I have a little bit of residual in my cup and I'm gonna take my spoon and I'm gonna like kind of stir it up in that and I'm gonna stick it to the side of my cup. Um, and then when this all dries, I can just pull my spoon out and all that resin will come out with my spoon. So we're gonna go ahead and let these set, you guys, and when we come back, um, we're gonna get them painted and get them prepped for the bottle. I have a few overpours on my Harper mold, which happens just because this mold is so small. So I like to go in and remove um, a lot of the overpours when it's still, um, like when the resin starts setting up, but it's still really soft. I can go in and it's super easy to just clean them up. And then anything that's left on there, I can just snip them with my scissors later. Okay, you guys, so now our resin is setting up pretty good. Um, I like to pull them out when they're a little bit warm because they're still super malleable. And like for this project in particular, um, especially with our numbers, we're going to need them. I did not pour a one. I am so fired. It's a good thing I have one. I have a one already poured because I didn't pour one this time. That's funny. So um, this one's pretty warm. Um, this is how you know when they're ready to pop off. If you pull it back and it pops, then you can take it out. So you don't have to worry about it. And I over poured a little bit on this one, but it's not a big deal. I'm just going to trim it off while it's still super malleable and it's easy to do. And then I can even use my scissors to cut this part off because I over poured quite a bit right there. And so now I'm good to go. I um, am going to pull my, try to pull my three out early because if you guys will look at the frame closely, um, it's domed. It's not flat. So I want to make sure that my three forms around that dome so that it lays flat on the surface. I don't think it's quite ready to come out yet though. And I'm going to show you guys a secret too. So my three is going to be pretty malleable. It's going to be easy for me to glue it on to the dome shape. But the one I did like probably a couple of weeks ago, but I can still use it. What I do is take my heat gun and I just heat it up a little bit and then it gets a little bit more malleable again. When it's not running away. That is. <laughs> So I'm going to put a little bit more heat on there. So I'm going to paint this and I'm going to paint it using Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel Paint. I like using the One Hour Enamel because it's a self-leveling product 
and it has a true eggshell finish and so I'll get like a really nice smooth finish which to me is going to be more um it's going to look more like a label than with the chalk paint where I'm more likely to get um brush strokes because it's thicker um the one our enamel just levels really beautifully but I'm going to need to prime it first so I am just going to use oh that's smoky quartz that's not primer I know I have gray primer over here somewhere. I'm going to use the dark gray primer from Wise Owl and I'm going to prime this first um, so that my one eye enamel goes on really nicely. When I'm working with my one hour enamel, I like to use watercolor brushes because they're super soft and they're going to help me get that really nice smooth finish that I'm looking for. So now that my primer is dry, you guys, I'm going to go in with my Wise Owl One Hour Enamel Paint um, and just do a quick coat of this over the top. I think this is going to be perfect. Perfection. It reminds me of enamel. That's why I think I like to use the One Hour Enamel because it dries and it looks like the old enamel that you would find like on old enamel numbers. Um... I think that's why I like it a lot. And so I'm going to use a watercolor brush um, with my enamel because I know it's going to give me a super smooth finish. Um, and I always put a little more paint than I need. Not a ton, but a little bit more because I want my paint, um, there to be enough paint for it to move around and to self-level so that I get that really nice um, smooth finish that I'm looking for. I'm just taking my brush, you guys, and I'm stippling into my details um, and kind of picking up any excess paint because I don't want to lose my details um, because they fill up with paint, right? Okay, and we're going to let this dry to a nice, smooth finish, um, and then we can get to the fun part. While this is drying, though, let's go ahead and paint our numbers. I just have some primer right here on my wax paper, so I'm going to go ahead and prime my numbers really quickly. I almost need little tweezers. So let's paint these with copper. I have Wise Owl's copper paint here. And it's heavy metals metallics, and they come in so many different metallics. Um, you can get the eight ounces, which are these, which is plenty for most people. Like, no one's painting a whole dresser with metallic. I don't think. Um, or you can get the 16 ounce. But generally, the eight ounce ones are a really nice size to have in your stash. I'm just using one of my cleaning tools to kind of hold my numbers down because they're running away. So just two quick coats of copper on these numbers, you guys, and they are ready to go. As a general rule, I do not use my dryer when I'm using the one hour enamel. Um, you really have to give the one hour enamel time to um, self level, but this one is nearly dry and I wanna get done. So I'm gonna shoot it really quickly and then we can come back and we can assemble our label and attach it to our bottle. Now that our black is dry, you guys, I'm gonna take my finger, you guys know I love the finger paint, and dip it in the copper and I'm just gonna go, just gonna touch the high points um, and really bring out the details of this piece. When you're painting something a dark color, like even a dark color or a really white color, sometimes you can lose a lot of your details. And so dry brushing or gilding um, are beautiful ways for you to highlight your high points so that you can really bring all those details to life. Marvelous. So... Let's glue our numbers on. And our numbers are still kind of squishy, which is what I want them to be so that they'll fit, so that they will um, bend to fit the dome of this piece. But they're still kind of tacky too. My fingers are kind of tacky too. Now that we have everything all painted, you guys, we can, we can glue on our numbers. And I always use um, Tide Bomb Quick and Thick. When I work with my molds, whether it's crafts or furniture, I always use this glue. 
I'm gonna use very little because I really don't want this glue to press out from underneath my number onto my piece. I'd like for it to be as clean as possible. And I'm eyeballing it, I'm not measuring, but you can measure if you'd like to make sure yours is completely centered. And this is gonna be a temporary decoration, you guys. Um, so I'm gonna be using hot glue to adhere my label to my bottle so that um, when the Halloween season is over, I can just heat up the label a little bit and I can remove it um, from my bottle. So I'm just gonna use my cleaning tool to kind of press it down long enough. I love the Tight Bond Quick and Thick because it's super tacky and your pieces adhere really quickly. Um, it takes a while for it to cure, but it's tacky enough for you to be able to tack it on and then move forward. I'm gonna heat up that one just a little bit. I need it to bend around the dome. What do you guys think? Yes? No? I vote yes. I vote yes. So I'm going to take my heat gun, which I probably should have turned on before now, and adhere this to my bottle. And while that's warming up, you guys, I'm just going to pop these numbers out and I'm going to put them in my container that I have here where I have other molds that I've um, made before. And then it's really cool because if I need something before I make new cast or new molds, I always go into my little buckets and see if I have something cast already. Okay guys, so we have our, um, our label assembled, right? Um, and now we're just gonna glue it to our bottle. I'm just gonna use like one, just one row of hot glue um, because I do plan to remove this after Halloween. So just one row of hot glue on here and I'm just gonna stick it to my bottle. And when Halloween is over, I'll be able to warm this up and pull it off. But for now, isn't that super cool? Although looking through my bottle, I probably should have done something with the back of my label. Next time, next time we'll decoupage the back of the label. But for now, it'll look super cool on my mantle. And I am done with that one. I also could have used this frame um, to make a label if I had a smaller bottle. But I think that's it for this project, you guys. If you like this project, be sure and subscribe. Um, if you hit the bell, you guys will get notified when we upload new videos. So you'll be sure that you will never miss out. Um, as always, you guys know that you guys can absolutely do anything that you see me here, that you see me do here. Um, on the tutorials so you guys can do this um you guys can do this today we'll see you next time have a blessed day